Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you all about the updates that were announced for Google Meet over the summer and what you can expect for this upcoming school year. One of the really big updates was just announced a couple weeks ago that this coming school year, you'll be able to add up to 25 co-hosts per meeting, and there's some expanded safety features that were just announced for Google Meet. So I know the first part of that is going to get teachers very excited because last year I heard from a lot of teachers that that was something they really wanted uh, when they were co-teaching classes or when they had a paraprofessional or uh, a myriad of other reasons, but being able to add up to 25 co-hosts per meeting will allow the teacher uh, to be able to focus more on teaching and while having other eyes that can also do some of those administrative things. Google's also uh, allowing the teachers and the co-hosts to be able to limit what students can share their screens, which can send chat messages, and the ability to mute all um, and to end the meetings. I know personally from using the mute all button, I had um, varying success with uh, how effective that was at the end of last school year. Uh, I have heard that it is much better, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that is for this school year. Um, and then, of course, uh, being able to use the quick access to setting to easily control who needs to request permission to join a meeting. Uh, previously, these uh, features were only available to Google Workspace for education customers, but the controls are now going to be available for all Google Meet users on desktop and on mobile. And just for a little bit more information, uh, in case you're wondering what abilities the co-host has, the co-host can mute participants, they can launch polls, they can manage questions and answers. And again, like I mentioned earlier, that gives the teacher more time to focus on the discussions and the teaching and uh, you know guiding attendees through presentations. So it gives other adults uh, the ability to kind of do some of those administrative functions. You can easily grant co-host um, capabilities by clicking on the three dots next to the user's name and then selecting add as co-host. Another really cool update is the ability to search for users. So I know with teachers that had uh, really big classes or that were doing presentations or virtual assemblies, uh, having to scroll through and find students was sometimes a tedious task, but you'll now be able to just type in a student's name and then uh, search for them that way. A big update that was announced back in July is that now users uh, who are on, on iOS, so if they have like an iPhone, they can also replace the background in Google Meet. I know this was something that I got so many comments about uh, asking when people will be able to do that, uh, if there was any way they could do that. Previously, there was not. But now, um, if you are on an iPhone, you'll be able to blur or replace the background with an image. Uh, and you can start using that immediately. So you can choose from either one of Google's hand-picked images um, or you can use your own. And just in case you missed it because it did happen at the end of last school year, um, Google Meet did get a visual upgrade. And so uh, now you'll be able to uh, customize how you appear in a meeting. So you can tap over your video feed um, that will allow you to select between a tile in the grid or a floating picture that you can reposition or hide. Uh, your self view will appear at the bottom right of the grid, allowing you to focus on the video feed at eye level. Uh, you can unpin the content that other people share, which allows you to see more and larger video feeds. Participants' names have, uh, will always be visible regardless of the meeting size. They've streamlined the bottom bar. So now they've moved the dial-in codes, attachments, participant list, chat, uh, and other activities on the bottom right to create more space. Uh, the volume and other controls are, have been consolidated in one place for easy access. The leave call button has been moved away from the microphone and camera buttons. Uh, so hopefully you have less accidental hangups. I know I experienced that a lot last year. And the bottom bar is always going to be visible, but it won't cover up the captions at the bottom of the video feeds. A couple other improvements are now when someone is speaking, their tile will be outlined in blue, which makes it easier to identify who's speaking. Uh, 
The mute indicators have been subdued, which helps kind of reduce some of that visual distraction. Uh, when there are more participants that can be shown in the grid, a uh, tile is added so that you always remember who is on the call. Google also made some improvements to the hand raising functionality in Google Meet. Um, so there's now an updated and improved visual icon and animation that go on the video tile. The tiles of people with raised hands can be moved um, so that they can be more visible in the video grid. Uh, there's an audio notification for all participants when the first ha raised hand is actually raised. There's a clickable notification which shows the number of raised hands and an ordered queue of all the participants. And one of the things that I really love is now um, once a participant speaks, their hand will be automatically lowered. It's no secret to anybody who has watched my videos that I absolutely love Google Meet. I think it's really impressive how responsive they are to teachers' needs and to the requests of teachers. I feel like all these updates that they've announced this past summer have only strengthened me and made it easier for teachers to use this. So I'm excited to see the way it continues to evolve. Uh, if you're excited about this, please let me know in the comments below what features you're most excited about and what you still hope to see, what Google hasn't given you yet that you're hoping they add this school year. And if you know of any teachers that would benefit from watching this video, please feel free to share it with them. And make sure to check out the description of this video for links to other videos that might help you as well, including uh, videos that have other updates for other G Suite products. Uh, and if you haven't already, please take a second, click on the subscribe button and click on that notification bell so that you get notified every time there's a new video. And if you haven't followed me on Twitter, please take a second and follow me at Dan Spada and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the EdTech Show. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.